Welcome back to r slash neighbors from hell, where people share stories about their crazy neighbors. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to join our amazing community. And without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. And the first one is titled, You Cannot Have That Trailer. So this is another story of getting an HOA to back down with a side of how dare you. In early November my aunt Anne, who lives with me, brought a cargo trailer onto my property with the intent to unload her possessions from it and eventually sell it. Now she did this with my full knowledge and consent, I had already double checked the CC and R's and the only mentions about trailers really was one section about not parking them on common areas which my property is not, so I approved it. The trailer then shows up and I am a little taken aback since what I thought was going to be a semi tasteful cargo mate manufactured utility trailer was instead a faded abused and repaired U-Haul truck box welded to a flatbed frame. Ugly as sin. I am less enthusiastic about this so I start pressuring and to sell it off. She works full time day shift so there's not a lot of light left at the end of the day to clean out the trailer so it is slow going. Here's a bit of relevant context that will come into play later. I have a back lap, she sometimes sneaks out when I'm not paying attention and takes herself out for a walk around the neighborhood. She does not run away per se, as she always happily comes running back when I call for her, but she does like to go check out the neighborhood when she gets bored of whatever I am doing. I don't intentionally let her do it either and always call her back as soon as I notice, but it happens about once a month or so, the day before this exchange was one of those days. Next I know it is the end of January and I get a nasty gram from our HOA compliance officer, ACC. ACC. What is the deal with your trailer out front? You should know the rules of the covenant, right? Me? Yes, there are only rules regarding parking on the common areas. That being said, we are working on getting it sold, I just don't like it there either. ACC? It has been there for some time and it should be behind the fence. Me? According to what part of the CC and R's? ACC? We have talked about this when you were on the board. Me? We will be selling it shortly and this trailer is entirely within my property. ACC Behind a fence just like a broken down car cannot be on your driveway. Common area is on the road, not your driveway. You've been in meetings when we had these conversations. And I have since thoroughly studied the CC and R's. I don't have any way of moving it. We are emptying it out and going to sell it in about a month. ACC That is not the community's problem and you put it here. You of all people who have been on the board should be setting an example not being the example. And you should come to the meeting tomorrow night and you explain and we can talk about it. Me? Sure. The same day right after this, ACC wife replies to a comment I had made in our neighborhood Facebook group that was asking about a black dog seeing wandering. I had casually mentioned, oh, it might have been mine, she went wandering this afternoon. No big deal, right? Not according to ACC wife. In another post she had commented, more concerned about folks who think it is okay to park their utility trailers and broke down vehicles in the front yard. There's no good excuse and rules are rules, yet there's a different level of comprehension. HOA meeting is tomorrow, support the community you choose to live in. Then on the dog post she commented, OP seriously? You're on a roll. You belong on the east side of nearby big city where you can live like a pig with no rules. Jesus, what a witch. Well, I have studied the CC and R's and the bylaws and I was pissed now, so I replied to that. I don't let my dog go wandering on purpose. She gets out sometimes and I don't notice for a bit. I'm just glad she prefers to go down the cul-de-sac than crossing the busy street or wandering aimlessly. Also, why am I only hearing about this now? Support the community you live in, I hear. Yet first I hear about the trailer being a concern as a scathing nasty gram this afternoon. Community members talk to each other. That trailer has been there since November. People have had over two months to voice concern. Two months to talk to me. I work from home. I'm not hard to contact. I'm not hard to reach. If I'm not home, chances are one of my roommates is. If anyone had talked to me, I would have told them it was only temporary while we clean it out and get it ready to sell and would have hastened the timeline for removal. I'm under the impression that while it is an eyesore, I'm not breaking any rules by storing it on my property. No one ever said anything, so between bad weather, holidays and busy holiday schedules, we've been taking our time. 
If my community would have spoken with me, I also would have told them that I agree it's an eyesore and if I would have known what it was or the shape it was in, I never would have allowed it to stay. I was thinking it was a tasteful cargomate trailer, not a panel van body on an axle, but I'm committed now. But no one talked with me. The only community I find around here is my friends living elsewhere and my church family. No one talked to me, just went whining to the HOA like bullies. I am fully within my rights to allow my roommate's trailer there. According to the CC&Rs pointed out to me, 13.71 states that no trailer or any similar equipment to the above will be permitted to remain in any area of the common area. Section 1.06 states that common area shall mean and refer to the portions of the property and all improvements thereto owned by the association for the common use and enjoyment by persons living in the complex. 13.7 therefore only applies to vehicles and such that are on the common area, which my driveway is not and therefore this does not apply to this situation. If the CC and R's need to be amended to correct this, then so be it, but until they are, I am allowed to have that trailer in my driveway. Now that I know that this is a concern, I have moved up the timeline for its removal, I already have someone interested in buying it, we just need to finish clearing it out. I never heard another word after that, not even at the HOA meeting, where I was raring to rip someone a new one, how oh well. Sold the trailer a week later, no lawyers, just good old fashioned putting people in their place. Definitions ACC Architectural Control Committee Chair, the person responsible for keeping everyone in compliance with the rules. CC and R's, the covenants, conditions and restrictions, the rules that control what we are allowed to do with our properties, not to be confused with the bylaws that control how the HOA is structured and is supposed to operate. And ripe stars, you know, that is one of the things I have noticed in many HOA stories. Most of the HOA committees and presidents, whatever, they don't even really know their own rules and if you actually read these CC and R's, you will find out that there are actually loopholes left and right that you can potentially exploit if you want to. And the next one starts like this. My girlfriend at the time had a boss who was always hitting on her, he would buy her things, flirt with her, etc. We hit a rough patch in our relationship and he did everything in his power to win her from me. He was a VP at the company, so he had the money and probably the smooth talking skills. She would bring him up in fights as a comparison, I got sick of it, me and her ended our 3 year relationship and sure enough, they are dating about a month later. However, he knew that the company was making her work over time and not paying her and said there is nothing I could do about it when she asked him. And he knew that she was having to take work home which was a no-no since she was a lingerie designer and was helping her start her own line which was a conflict of interest to his company. Flashback to a few months earlier, her company has a Christmas party and I meet the CEO, I won't say his name but it was a name that I remembered for some reason. Now I was pissed, this scumbag basically took my girlfriend from me, I know it was probably for the best because any girl that would fall for that shouldn't be with me anyway but I'm not thinking that way at the time. I have no ethical hang-ups about revenge and it was time to get some. I realized that her company email had a template, first name, last name at company.com, so I figured that the CEO's email address probably had the same format. With all the knowledge I had, it would be a shame not to blindly email the CEO of his company with detailed info about how his VP was putting his company at risk by dating his employees, knowingly breaking employment laws, allowing sensitive materials out into the public and and start a rival company. So that is what I did. I never got a response from the CEO, however a couple years later I ran into my ex and had a couple of drinks with her. She told me about how bad of a boyfriend he was, how they fought all the time and how she went off and hit him one night. She got really close to hitting me a couple of times but I calmly told her that if she laid a hand on me I would hit her back harder than she could ever imagine and would be happy to go to jail for it. She also told me that the problems really started when he lost his job. I asked how that happened and she told me that it was abrupt but even he did not really know the reason, it was one of those HR driven, we are letting you go type firings. 
I told her what I did. She was shocked and angry and left the bar without saying another word, but I didn't give a damn. Even the remote possibility that I was the reason why that scumbag got fired and he got my crappy girlfriend who hit him made me feel like a million bucks and I would do it again in a heartbeat. And the next one is titled, I led a revolution against our petty HOA board. My wife and I moved into a 64 townhome community that was 10 years old at the time. The HOA board was comprised of five members that were original homeowners when the community started and had been the sole board members since the community started. Their sense of entitlement was absolutely crazy. They thrived on their quarterly walkthrough of the neighborhood as they would write up every single home for some kind of violation, regardless of how minor the offenses were. Everyone gets a violation letter. Our first letter, the first month living there, was that our garage door paint was starting to peel, it was a 2 cm scrape where the panels met, it needed to be repainted, the siding needed to be power washed, there was a patch of green moss behind a bush and the sliding door on the deck was dirty, there was dirt on the bottom of the door from recent rain and it needed to be washed. We had 30 days to fix the issues or beginning accruing a fee of $25 a day until they are resolved. I asked around and everyone gets these ridiculously petty letters every quarter. No matter what you did to maintain your townhome, you were going to get a letter about something. As this was going on, none of the major items the neighborhood needed fixed were addressed. After a decade since the construction, the ground had settled unevenly and many homes had standing water issues where it couldn't drain after a storm. The rainwater would sit for 5-7 to seven days in people's lawns. And more importantly, there had been a legal fight with the town since the community was started about our road being dedicated, meaning the town was responsible for snow removal. Our HOA dues included paying for our own snow removal, which we shouldn't have to, and we were paying an attorney for 10 years to fight this with no resolution in sight. Fast forward at two years and a few of us had enough and decided to band together to replace the board at the next annual meeting. The existing board got wind of this and hit us all with pages worth of issues with our property since if you have outstanding issues you are not in good standing with the community and thus cannot run for a board position or even vote for those running. This petty move brought the community even closer and we all spent the weekend before the meeting helping each other clean out their HOA honeydew lists and we took pictures, documented everything and then we had the US mail certify delivery of each packet with the completed list and photos to the HOA board who lived 75 feet away. Come board night, oddly enough, the lawyer was there to give an update that no progress has been made with the township on dedicated our road. He stuck around as we moved to the elections for the next board. We brought our signed petitions to add our names to the ballot. The board says we are not eligible as we have all outstanding issues with our property. We call bullcrap with our receipts from the post office that they received our completed lists with documentation. They reply that they haven't reviewed them yet. We tell them that is not our problem and we are in good standing. Their lawyer overhearing this states we are eligible to be on the ballot if we can confirm the issues with our homes were resolved prior to the meeting. The HOA president glares at the lawyer but the lawyer just shrugs saying the rules are the rules. With the exception of the five existing board members voting for themselves slash each other we are voted in nearly unanimously to replace them. I led the revolution because I was tired of the petty BS when there were real problems in the neighborhood. Sadly, the rest of the elected board members vote me as president. I have no idea what I'm doing, but we spent the next few sessions removing all the dumb violations from most of the neighbors. We went through the bylaws to really focus on what is important. What happens next? Ends up that lawyer was a friend of the previous president and was in no hurry to resolve anything as he was enjoying our excessive bill. I notify him if it is not resolved in the next six months we are finding new representation. He was actually good at his job when pressed to do it, he won the case, the town appealed and tried to drag it out. He fast tracked the appeal as it had been going on for 10 years and we won the appeal too. The town dedicated our road and then the lawyer pressed that it should have been done years ago. It wasn't him slowing things down, but the town. He ends up getting us a settlement from the judge for back pay on us, paying for snow removal that the town was responsible for. 
We ended up using that settlement to have French drains installed across much of the community to clear the standing water issues. With the money left over, we fixed a lot of the neighborhood issues that the HOA should have been doing the whole time. Fences and sidewalks in disrepair, replaced dead trees and shrubs etc. It was great getting all that done without having to hit our capital reserve fund. I remained president until we moved a few years ago, our family began to outgrow the townhome and now we live in a new larger development. With a new HOA, I was asked to run for a position on it, I replied, not a damn chance, but I will lead a coup d'etat if I need to. Edit, one minor update on what happened to the former HOA president that I replaced. The original HOA president, 50 year old male, was not actually eligible to be president. He was not on the mortgage, the townhome was in his mom's name, no one knew because he held the books. The best was at the next annual meeting, he shows up with his petition to try and get his position back. I tell him in front of the other 60 plus homeowners that he cannot even be at the meeting, let alone vote or be on a ballot, as his name is not on the property. But his mom is eligible if she wants to. That was embarrassing enough for the entitled little prick. Anyway, the next story starts like this. I couldn't stand this one kid who I went to high school with, who I lived a few blocks away in the neighborhood. One night he sent cops to my parents house where I was still living, telling them I had done something I didn't do. Luckily I had a receipt in my pocket from the restaurant I was at, in a suburb 10 miles away that was timestamped half an hour later than when he said the incident occurred. Regardless, my parents were woken up etc, I was pissed. Well, a few days later my mom bought some plants that she left in the kitchen window. Our family cat was a nutball to begin with, but all of a sudden he was constantly jumping on the counters eating these plants. When I would try and chew him down, he would actually take a defensive stance and hiss and scratch. Ten minutes later he would be back chewing on the leaves. I asked my mom what the plants were and she said, oh, they are catnip, they have a really pretty flower. I'm going to plant them in the backyard when the weather warms up. I was like, not a chance you're planting these in our backyard. Look at what you're doing to the cat. He is an aggressive stoner. You will bring every cat in the neighborhood and they will all fight all night long. Suddenly, at that exact moment, a revenge plot was born. The following night I snuck into his backyard and planted the catnip everywhere. My friend who lived across the street from him told me it worked perfectly and that he was always complaining about cats fighting in his backyard after that. Revenge, but no physical confrontation, no property damage, just stoned cats. Felt a little like some sort of supervillain sending out my cat minions to do my dirty work. And I gotta say guys, that is actually a very unique story, because as you all know, humans are usually the slaves of cats, but in this case, OP actually made his cat work for him. Either way, if you are a cat lover and enjoy my stories, please don't forget to like the video and maybe even post some star emojis in the comments if you want to support the channel. Thank you so much in advance. The next one starts like this. When I was in junior high school, I used to hang out with these dudes during PE class. Then they turned into douchebags, they started bullying other kids, not participating in any of the activities etc. I started getting in trouble just by hanging out with them, so I stopped. Of course, I was now a coward. They would do things like try to push me while running track, gang up on me in sports etc. And well, one day I opened my lunch to find my dessert missing. This went on for days and I had no idea where it was going. I then saw one of these dudes eating it while laughing at the lunch table and shooting me knowing glances. I could have easily beaten this dude down but I was never into physical violence so I thought and I thought and I schemed and it hit me. The next week I brought homemade brownies, Mondays were fine, Tuesdays were fine, Wednesdays were fine, Thursday had a little surprise in them in the form of chocolate laxatives. While he was eating the brownie during lunch, I approached him, I told him I knew he was stealing my desserts and he should stop. What are you going to do about it? was his reply to the laughs of his little cronies. I turned around and walked away. We found ourselves in PE class a bit later that afternoon, it was time for calisthenics, jumping jacks, sit ups, stretching and oh my god what the frick was the scream from a girl a few rows over from me. This kid crept so much his entire gym shorts were soaked with brown liquid. 
It was going down his legs, it was filling his shoes, he tried to run out of the gym but slipped in the crappy water and got it all over his body and some on his face. For two weeks he didn't come to school, while he was gone the rumors started, some said he died, some said he was pooping blood, none of those were true, he was just too embarrassed and he knew what he was coming back to. This happened in 7th grade, we parted ways after junior high, when I went to a private high school. However, I heard that the poop incident followed him through high school, no one would hang out with him, he was a social pariah. Now, keep in mind, I had no idea it would turn out like that, I figured he would get stomach cramps and diarrhea that night, I had no idea he would end up taking a poop bath in the middle of gym, in front of everyone. But I didn't regret it and still don't, he was a piece of poop that deserved what he got, not really sure if he suspected me or not, if he did, he never let on. And ripe stars, unfortunately we have already reached the end of today's video, I hope you enjoyed the content, however if you cannot wait for more ripe content, then I suggest you head on over to patreon.com slash ripe youtube, where you can find more exclusive reddit content read by me. Patreon subscriptions start at just $1 per month and for $1 your name will show up at the end of each of my new videos. However, if you are willing to spend $3 per month, you will get access to more than 50 exclusive reddit videos, mostly just no mother-in-law stories. However, please understand I don't want to pressure anyone into spending money, because I am already incredibly grateful that you watch my videos every single day. Thank you so much for your daily support, it really means the world to me and I hope to see you again tomorrow for the next video.